Hillary Clinton is trying to clear the air over the email controversy that's hurting her campaign. She spoke exclusively to MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell in just her third national TV interview since launching her campaign, talking about why she used the personal email address for work. Are you sorry? Do you want to apologize to the American people for the choice you made? Well, it wasn't the best choice, and I certainly have said that. I will continue to say that, as I've also said many times. It was allowed, and it was fully above board. The people in the government knew that I was using a personal account. But it would have been better if I'd had two separate accounts to begin with. At the end of the day, I am sorry that uh, this has been confusing to people and has raised a lot of questions. It has raised a lot of questions. And a recent survey of voters showed that it affected how people see her. The first words that came to mind when asked about you were liar, untrustworthy, uh, crooked. How does that make you feel? Well, it certainly doesn't make me feel good. Um, but I am very confident that by the time this campaign uh, has run its course, people will know that what I've been saying is accurate. The American people will know that they can trust me when it comes to standing up for them and fighting for them well, and, you know, being their advocate and their champion. And I think that's what this election, when it's all said and done, has to be about. The polls showed the damage done by the email controversy, with her favorability ratings dropping over the last few months. Joining me now is Mo Elathi, uh, the former communications director for the DNC and executive director of Georgetown's Institute of Politics and Public Service, and the National Journal's Michelle Cottle. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Rev. Thank you, Reverend. Mo, Mo, let me start with you. Do you think this interview helped her on the email controversy? Uh, look, yeah, I think so. I think my biggest criticism, uh, uh, and I, in full disclosure, I worked for her in her last campaign. I think the biggest criticism I have is that there wasn't more of this sooner in the process. And I think there are a lot of Hillary supporters out there that would have liked to have seen a little bit more of an aggressive explanation, pushback, um, media presence on this early on because this story just took on a life of its own and spun out of control. And so she's been unable to really break through nationally with her main message because this is all anyone's talking about. So I think it's good for her uh, and I think what people are waiting for or have been waiting for is for her to personally directly uh, address the issue and, and try to put it to bed so that she can get out there and talk about what she wants to talk about. This isn't what she wants to talk about, clearly. Michelle, help her or hurt her? Oh, it definitely helps her. I mean, it's not even a question of exactly what she says or exactly how she feels a particular question. Mo is absolutely on point. He's actually being a little bit gentle here. It's been making Democrats crazy that they let this <laughs> get to this point, that they didn't come out and address this more and so what she really needs to do is every opportunity she needs to get people bored with talking of hearing her talk about this the rap against her is that she's too secretive that she doesn't like to talk about things that are uncomfortable so by doing this she kind of works against that narrative and that helps even you know regardless of what particular questions get asked now mo you said you worked with her uh, on the last campaign andrea mitchell uh she asked uh, miss clinton about how she felt toward the end of a campaign in 2008 compared to how she feels today. Listen to the exchange. Do you worry that this could be happening again? That what happened with your email has created so much controversy that you could be losing this opportunity a second time? Well, I don't feel that. I feel that I have questions to answer, which I uh, intend to do at every turn uh, with you and others about uh, the whole email issue and to keep saying the same thing and then also to keep making the case that I'm making for uh, the presidency, what I stand for, what I've always stood for, what I will fight for. Mo, is, is the Clinton campaign people confident that this email controversy will just fade away? No, I, well, look, by all appearances, I, I think um, 
Uh, I, it doesn't seem like it today. Uh, the fact that she is out there today and you're hearing from the Clinton campaign that they're going to uh, have her out there more aggressively in the coming weeks and doing more interviews. And uh, I, it seems to me like, uh, like the Clinton campaign knows that this has been a challenge for them and that they've got to turn the corner. You know, and as Michelle said, there, there, there are a lot of Democrats out there saying that to them. So it's, it looks like this is now the beginning of a, of a serious offensive to kind of push back on this and get the campaign talking about what it would rather be talking about. Eight years ago, um, she was uh, had her back up against the wall and she came out and aggressively and was out there and was talking to people and was connecting with people and got a little looser and a lot nimbler and you know what when she did that she started to win she started to win states she started to win more delegates she started to win more votes uh, and she beat Barack Obama in, in, in most of the late primaries it was too late in the game but you saw a, a, a more uh, hungry Hillary Clinton out there and that and that played well. Uh, I think you're seeing them start to do that a little bit earlier in this cycle than they did last. Michelle, there's been a lot of speculation about Vice President Biden and whether or not he will run. He addressed the rumor head on at a speech at an Atlanta synagogue yesterday. Watch this. I will be straightforward with you. The most relevant factor in my decision <clears throat> is whether my family and I have the emotional energy to run. The factor is, can I do it? Can my family undertake what is an arduous commitment that would be proud to undertake under ordinary circumstances? But the honest to God answer is I just don't know. What do you think, Michelle? Is he likely to make this run? You know, I've learned never to actually try and predict what Biden's going to do. But, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's obviously had presidential dreams not that long ago, but he's been through an awful lot. And I think it's hard for him at this point because so many Democrats are probably coming to him and they're a little bit nervous because of all the trouble Hillary Clinton has had. And for him to sit back and watch this and think this is his last shot at doing this and does he really want to close the door and not go for it, I mean, that has to be kind of pushing him forward on some level. But when push comes to shove, you know, it's a it's just like a complete commitment, as he points out. And I don't think it's a great time for him to be doing this. But you never know. Now, what do you think, Mo? Does he run? I don't know. And anyone that that tries to answer that question doesn't know what they're talking about. I, I love Joe Biden. I absolutely love Joe Biden. And that answer may be one of the most heartfelt, honest answers I've ever heard anyone publicly give about the, their personal decision-making process. This is a very big decision under normal circumstances, and he's making this decision under very uh, abnormal uh, and sad circumstances uh, for him. And so um, it, it, when, it's, when the decision becomes that personal, that it's all about how you and your family are going to handle it, uh, no one can predict how it's going to play out. Moe Lathy and Michelle Cottle, thank you both for your time tonight. Have a great weekend. Thanks. And you thank can you, you catch too. Andre Mitchell's full interview with Hillary Clinton tonight on the Rachel Maddow Show at 9 p.m. Eastern. Ahead, Jeb Bush accuses Donald Trump of dog whistle politics on immigration. Plus, Beyonce's birthday gets a special notice from the White House.